the rice horse from the distance where we sit and watch it is all gracefulness flying through the air but from up close we would see the strain the effort to control the horse the labored painful breathing keep others at a distance and they will only see the ease with which you move law 30 make your accomplishments seem effortless your actions must seem natural and executed with ease all of the toil and practice that go into them and all the clever tricks must be concealed when you act act effortlessly as we could do much more avoid the temptation of revealing how hard you work it only raises questions teach no one your tricks or they'll be used against you on Easter Sunday, March 31st, 1929, New York churchgoers began to pour onto Fifth Avenue. After the morning service for the annual Easter parade, people were wearing their finest outfits, women in particular, showing off the latest in spring fashions. But this year, the promenaders on Fifth Avenue noticed something else. Two young women were coming down the steps of St. Thomas Church. At the bottom, they reached into their purses, took out cigarettes, lucky strikes, and lit up. Then they walked down the avenue with their escorts, laughing and puffing away. A buzz went through the crowd. Women had only recently begun smoking cigarettes, and it was considered improper for a lady to be seen smoking in the street. Only a certain kind of woman would do that. These two, however, were elegant and fashionable. People watched them intently. Later, two young ladies, equally elegant, approached the two holding cigarettes and as if suddenly inspired to join them, pulled out lucky strikes of their own and asked for a light. Now the four young women were marching together down the avenue. They were steadily joined by more, soon ten young women holding cigarettes in public, as if nothing were more natural. Photographers appeared and took pictures of this novel sight. Everyone was talking about the daring young women and their cigarettes. The next day, photographs and articles appeared in the papers about them. A United Press dispatch read, Miss Berta Hunt and six colleagues strike another blow on behalf of the liberty of women. Down Fifth Avenue they strolled, puffing at cigarettes. Miss Hunt issued the following communique from the smoke-clouded battlefield. I hope that we have started something, and that these torches of freedom will smash the discriminatory taboo on cigarettes for women, and that our sex will go on breaking down all discriminations. The story was picked up by newspapers around the country, and soon women in other cities began to light up in the streets. The controversy raged for weeks, some papers decrying this new habit, others coming to the women's defense. A few months later though, public smoking by women had become a socially acceptable practice. Few people bothered to protest it anymore. Interpretation In January 1929, the women met beforehand in the office where Bertha Hunt worked as a secretary. They planned which churches to appear at, how to link up with each other, all the details. Bertha handed out packs of lucky strikes. Everything worked to perfection on the appointed day. Little did the woman know though, that the whole affair had been masterminded by a man, Miss Hunt's boss, Edward Bernays, a public relation advisor to the American Tobacco Company, makers of Lucky Strike. American Tobacco had been luring women into smoking with all kinds of clever ads, but the consumption was limited by the fact that smoking in the street was considered unladylike. The head of American Tobacco had asked Bernays for his help, and Mr. Bernays had obliged him by applying a technique that was to become his trademark, gain public attention by creating an event that the media would cover as news, orchestrate every detail, but make them seem spontaneous. You will often have to use tricks and ingenuity to create your effects, but your audience must never suspect the work or the thinking that has gone into them. Nature does not reveal its tricks, and what imitates nature, by appearing effortless, approximates nature's power. The more mystery surrounds your actions, the more awesome your power seems. You appear to be the only one who can do what you do, and the appearance of having an exclusive gift is immensely powerful. Because you achieve your accomplishments with grace and ease, people believe that you could always do much more if you tried harder. This elicits not only admiration, but a touch of fear, your powers are untapped, no one can fathom their limits. Why you must make your accomplishments seem effortless? 
when you reveal the inner workings of your creation, you become just one more mortal among others. What is understandable is not all inspiring. We tell ourselves we could do just as well if we had the money and the time. So avoid the temptation of showing how clever you are. It is far cleverer to conceal the mechanisms of your cleverness. Do not give people ideas that can be used against you because you can't see the advantages of keeping silent. Resist the temptation to want your vanity gratified by having your hard work and cleverness applauded. Learn to control this propensity to blab, for its effect is often the opposite of what you expect. Reversal The secrecy with which you surround your actions must seem light-hearted in spirit. A zeal to conceal your work creates an unpleasant, almost paranoid impression. You're taking the game too seriously. As long as the partial disclosure of tricks and techniques is carefully planned rather than the result of an uncontrollable need to blab. It is the ultimate in cleverness. It gives the audience the illusion of being superior and involved, even while much of which you do remains concealed from them.